Sir, today is our tall and great leader, Kalinier's sixth anniversary, sir. Engal Nenjangalil, Vinnukum, Mannukum, Uyandrikum, Endrendrum, Engal Nenjangalil, Vandu Kundirikum, Uttamilarini, Kalinier, our Gilin, Ara, Nenjangalil, our Vanangi, in the Ure, Tuakirin. Sir, our tall leader, Kalinier, had brought in the first step in India, where Tamil Nadu was the only state where women were given rights for heritably inheriting their property, sir. So as long as some woman is inheriting property to, even today in Tamil Nadu or anywhere in this country, I think Kalanya's name will live on forever and ever and ever, sir. Sir, this bill, finance bill, we are discussing about this union budget. Sir, what is the role of a government, sir? The role of a government is not in taxing people and using that money and spending it alone, sir. The role of a government is to see how they are going to be taking care of the people who are oppressed. When I say oppressed, it is religiously oppressed, children, women, the poor, the disabled, all these people, how they are taken care of. If you look at this budget, what has happened, you will find that technically, whenever you are having collection of taxes, sir, you are expected to have 60% as direct taxes and 40% as indirect taxes, sir. Because the indirect taxes is something where even the poor people are contributing towards that, like in the form of GST. But if you look at our tax collection, the last year, 20 lakhs was from GST, sir, and 12 lakhs was from direct taxes. How this had reduced is because this government had given a concession to the corporates where the taxation was 30%, they reduced it to 22%, favoring all the big corporates. Sir. But they have taxed the poor by increasing the GST on even essential items. Sir, sir when you are talking about GST, there have been several people who have been mentioning about the health insurance, the life insurance, where these need to be, the taxes need to be abolished. Because out-of-pocket expenditure for the common man is so high in this country that people say that the government's role over here should be huge. Where the government's recommendation to the government for allocation for health was 6% of its total budget allocation, a meager amount of only 2% or less than 2% has been allocated, sir. And also, when you're talking about GST, you have to find that infant foods containing milk you are charging 18% from infants' food also, sir. This is a shameful incident, and there has been a long-pending long pending demand by disabled people, sir. We are talking about physically disabled people. Our leader used to say that you should not call them physically disabled, you should call them physically challenged people. And those people, when they are using processes, when they are using, uh, using artificial limbs, you are charging 18% on those items also, sir. This is blood money, sir. If not anything, this is blood money. And I hope that this government will wake up and make sure that this GST on all these kind of items are totally removed, sir. In fact, if you remember, in 1920, I think, 1930, Mahatma Gandhi went on a salt satyagraha about the tax, salt tax. So I think somebody has to fight against this government to curb all the taxes which they are levying on the disabled people and making the poor people more and more poorer, sir. Sir, uh, when we are talking about employment, this government, in 2014, when they came to the government, they said that every year they will get a two crore jobs. But in the last 10 years, I think they have failed miserably in this count. And now the, your economic survey, has said that every year there will be a requirement of 80 lakh jobs. And how are you addressing this? You are saying that you are going to be giving 20 lakh jobs every year for the next five years, amounting to one crore youth. And they are going to be placed in corporates, 500 corporates, sir. That is roughly translating to about 4,000 persons per corporate. But when I spoke to some of those corporates, they said that their total Employed force itself is only 4,000, and how are we going to be accommodating 4,000 people over here? And even skilling them is not going to happen, because the need of the hour is not having all these people in this organized sector, sir. Unorganized sector is where there is a huge demand for employment, and you have not focused on anything. You are talking about skilling for MSME, but what in reality is happening, you are killing the MSME, sir. Today, the MSMEs are struggling to even survive, where several 
thousands and thousands of MSMEs have closed down. You have to understand that employment, about 47% of the country's employment is provided for by the MSME sector, sir. Sir, we are talking about agriculture, sir. When you're talking about agriculture, this government came out with three farm laws, which they hastily withdrew. And they kept claiming that these three farm laws will improve the quality of life of the farmers. And if that was their belief, I do not know why they had to take it back, withdraw that bill. But if you truly believe that these farm laws are going to be helpful for the agriculturists, the BJP government is ruling in more than 10 states in uh, India, sir. Why don't you introduce it in UP or Bihar? Because your own states, you will not accept these farm laws, but you want to implement this to all the people in this country and where the agriculturists, already the number of people who are committing suicide is high, you are planning to make sure that the number of agriculturists dying is going to become more. Sir, with this kind of an attitude, we also are talking about the Supreme Court had come out and spoken about electoral bonds, sir. So the electoral bonds, this government has only worked to enrich a select few, sir, like our honorable leader of the opposition had said, A1 and A2, and the BJP government had collected through electoral bonds about 18,000 crores, sir. It's about 1,800 crores per annum. Sir, one minute, sir. And because the Supreme Court brought out this, uh, insisted that this detail should be published, it was published, and you know what was the curious thing about, sir? Every time there was a contribution towards BJP government, there is, there is a history where there has been an ED raid. So enforcement direct raid, raid happens, and then subsequently funds are being transferred or deposited into the BJP, uh, BJP's account, sir. Sir, the enforcement direct rate over here has been functioning as an extortion department of this ruling government, and it's a shameful thing, and the people have been made aware of this only because of the efforts of the Supreme Court, sir. Sir, this go sir, We'll conclude, sir. Sir, minute, sir, conclude, sir. One when we are talking about budget, the people in our country, every time there is a budget, the ruling government and its allies will say it's, a, it's the praise it to the sky. But the opposition will trash it to the bin. But here, the common man has trashed it to the bin. The disappointment of the common man, the middle class, is so huge. You have talked about giving uh, Stops to the middle class, sir, but the middle class are the ones because of these capital gains, long term and short term capital gains, which has increased. I feel that this, I, I would like to object to this because you have. The thing will go on. Madam Arsuda. Thank you.